followed by designers for years to come. Nancy Lancaster was an American who married uh, someone who became an ambassador, or I think it was an ambassador or consul in England, and became interested in design, and a partner, actually her husband bought her a partnership in the business. John Fowler, I think Colfax either died or retired. John Fowler was her partner in Colfax and Fowler. And Nancy Lancaster popularized the English country house look. And the English country house look was most vivid in, and again, this yellow is sort of a poison yellow, and that wasn't the real yellow. Her drawing room was promoted, was, was published in America, and inspired people. And people like Mario Bois, just to pick the most obvious, who loves patterned chintz and the English country house look, will say that, that that's the original inspiration that turned his interest in design. And what this is, is this is looking not, not the undecorated look like Sister Parrish. The decorated, but decorated casually and, how shall I say it, it's the old money look. You know, it, it doesn't look as though you necessarily decorated it yesterday. It looks as though everything passed down in the fabric. One of the things that I've been told that the designers have done, when you don't want things, something like chintz fabric or pattern background, you don't want it to look new. The trick apparently is to soak it in tea, mm -hmm. and then it gets this slightly aged thing that looks like you know, the family always owns it. And another interior by Colfax and Fowler. Okay, what happened? Do you want to know when the field changed? Well, one of the people who helped change, who didn't become really famous, Benjamin Baldwin who's an architect in Chicago who had a successful project in Chicago doing interiors and came to New York. This was his own house in Central Park West and designed the furniture too and the very simple one. This was in the time, okay, this was the late 80s, or so mid 80s. And at that time I was working in, and working in design industry. And I remember this was everywhere. This was in all the design magazines, and this was in subsequently in books and in newspapers. This was radically modern. Ward, Ward Bennett designed furniture that's still made like that, uh, that moving table. Um, Noel does a couple of his pieces. He designed in steel and glass. His interiors were hard edge modern, very, very dramatic. And this was not the look that most people had. What this is, is if you know the Dakota, the Dakota is the medieval looking apartment house on 72nd Street in Central Park West. It was one of the, it was considered the first apartment house in Manhattan. There's another building that claims to be the first. This is the first large one. And it was built at a time when most people lived in mansions or townhouses. It was built to convince people that you could live elegantly in an apartment. And the top two levels were, and it was built at the turn of the century, I think a little earlier, it was built when the top two levels were servants quarters. And what people like him did, he bought two of these, these were servants quarters, turned them into a duplex apartment, which is why all the funny walls. And it must have been fabulous. Um, well, he's dead now, I'm not sure what happened to it. Um, this, I want to show you what was happening. Not, these are not all the famous designers. These are changes in design. In the, what is it, the 60s, people already started moving to Soho. Alan Buxbaum is a designer who people generally credit for originating sort of the loft look in apartments. Um, in the 60s, people started moving to Soho. Artists started moving. Soho was a wasteland, not exactly a slum, but it was sort of a decayed manufacturing district. And it was zoned not for residential use. Artists started sneaking in there and living there because it was large enough space for them to paint. Not, not because it was no money. They could paint there, they could do their sculpture there. So they put in bathrooms and plumbing and lived there illegally. 
After a while, the city decided, what the heck, they're all living there anyway, I might as well allow them to live there. So in the late 70s, early 80s, there was, around then, there was a loft law, which made it legal for you to work, it was artist, um, it was studio and residence. So you couldn't move in unless you were an artist and you could show that you made a living as an artist then you were allowed to live there. There were people who sneaked in there. But let's say you get the space and you want to live in there. What do you do? You build real walls? You turn it into a regular apartment? No, you, you have to do something that goes with it. Buck Spout was one of the architects, the designer, who thought of how to treat this. So the typical loft originally would be, you would have, it's not like what lofts are now. You have tin ceiling, you would paint the ceiling and treat it, you'd leave it natural. You would use industrial fixtures like this. You would have special, this was a concrete top table, you'd use steel. So it wouldn't be just modern furniture, it would be industrial looking things. Um, you put in glass block had not been seen since, I know you have a Thank you. great catch. Glass block had, I'm, we're almost finished. And, Glass block hadn't been seen since the, what, the, the 30s when glass block was popular. But he introduced glass block. So this was, oh, and the, the rough beams. So this was really what became, what ended up taking the label of high tech, if you've heard the term. High tech was the style label that we gave in the 80s for furniture that used, for furniture, I'm sorry, for interiors that used industrial elements. And uh, now, now you take a loft, a loft is just an open space. They build new apartments and call them lofts because it's, it's a fashionable name. But then they were really using the framework of the old space. One thing that this reminds me, and that I did tell this, this afternoon's class, and it has nothing to do with what this lecture is supposed to be about, um, but students have commented